Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part three of the 12 inch Admiral Color. And what we're going to try to do today is uh, plan out how we're going to install the electrolytic capacitors. And I have various values which I think are going to work in my favor. Uh, they've all been kind of pulled from the parts bin with the exception of a couple new ones. Uh, but we need to figure out how we're going to mount them. Very likely terminal strips. I find uh, the bolt top amusing. I don't know why I didn't think that was important to begin with, but that's fairly significant. Um, also, you'll notice here that I have replaced the tin control. And that's a 50K linear. The shaft needs to be cut about a quarter of an inch, and we need to machine it down so that it has a slot and will fit the knob, but that's at a later episode. Right now I'm just concerned in getting the capacitors inside of the chassis. So if we come over here, assuming the camera will follow me today, and let's get it a little more light. So those are the two major high voltage cans. And let me see if I can get the light on them a little better without blinding everybody. Mm, probably not. Okay. So here we have can number one, uh, which has 200 microfarad, uh, 350, which is basically going to comprise of this 180 microfarad at 400 and a 22 in parallel. We've got this 160, and again, another 180 is going to go in its place. Uh, for the 80 at 350, I've got a 100 at 450. And then the 10 at 350, I have a 10 at 450. And then this guy here is a 350 microfarad at 250 volts. And I have a 330 microfarad at 250 volts. And again, another 22 in parallel to that. Uh, should take care of all the capacitor needs. But it's really just a matter of mounting it here. So the first thing we're going to do is make a diagram as to where all the wiring goes into what section and write down what the sections are and then yank the cans out and see what we have to work with as far as space. So looking at the bottom of those cans we can see that it's pretty jam-packed. I'm realistically going to have to cut a lot of these ties to get wires out of the way and find out where they go, find out what section they belong to and it's very difficult to see on camera where things are. Uh, this is the half dome, this the square, this the triangle, and this the blank. So I'm going to write and make a diagram of where those connections go on paper so that way there's no confusion when I go to wire up the new capacitors, which aren't going to be in this location, they're going to be up top on a terminal strip. So I need to make sure everything's right here. So just give me a moment, let me write all this stuff down, and then I'll show you. Okay, so here's what that's looking like right now. And you can see I've got it in the same orientation. So green, blue, and with their various location so now that I've got that written down I can just cut all those wires and we can work on ripping the can out and then we'll work on a little doubler can thing or maybe this isn't a doubler maybe this is just I mean they've got it isolated from the chassis so I assume it is but I don't see the uh, diodes nearby so maybe it is just an extra filter it's strange that they have it isolated from the chassis there's probably some reason for that and I'm not going to defeat that uh, but with that one, it's pretty much just the giant resistor going to the positive side and the red wire going to the negative side. So I'll make a note of that just real quick here. And so noting that there, now we can just cut those out of the picture and we can start yanking parts. I know this is so exciting, but how to do it one way or another. 
And of course, everyone wants to call an hour and a half before we're open. All right, let me get that and get them off the phone. All right, just really pisses me off when we have posted business hours everywhere on the internet and everyone wants to try to call and leave a lengthy message and eat up all the space on my answering machine. Okay, so we're going to go snippety clip it here. And here. Okay, okay. Oh, that one wants to fight me. Okay, so all the wires are clipped. Now, because I don't want to damage this, I don't have my FP tool with me. That's at, at the other workshop at the house. I'm going to very carefully with these flats bend these uh, twist lock tabs as straight as we can to get them out of the chassis. And this one over here I might just have to fatigue till it breaks because it's got solder on it from the wire. Okay. Just grab a hold and go twisty twisty. And it breaks off. And then from the other side I should be able to grab a hold of it and pull it out. Just like that. So there's our dead capacitor there. It's very bulged. And this one's going to be tricky because everything's soldered in and I might just end up prying it from the top until the can rim fails and then grinding off the rest because I fear that getting down in here with a soldering gun is going to melt a lot of wires and screw a lot of things up. But First, we need to see if we can get it off from the top first, and it just might require some violence. So, uh, let's get the old can off first and see if it'll come out peacefully. So, there's the little bugger right there. And yeah, we're just going to grab and start prying. And if we're lucky, and I stop bashing the camera mount, We'll just fatigue the solder underneath so it'll break free, or the rim of the can, one of the two, will give out first. You can see that that chassis is really thin, and it loves to bend and flex. Also, if I get it up enough and I don't want to do too much chassis damage, I can see if I can fit a cutoff wheel underneath there with the Dremel tool and do it that way. I think I might pursue it that way. Because the metal on this chassis is just too soft. And I fear as though I'm going to do some kind of damage to it. So let's get this up enough and let's get a Dremel tool underneath it. I'm going to try to use up my old dead cutoff wheel first. If it'll even reach underneath there, we'll see. So. Uh, da, 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 no, no, I don't think so. I don't think that's going to work. I think that's going to be cranky. Well, there is metal there. If anything, it'll just shatter and we'll replace it. So headphone users beware. Yeah, I was about ready to shatter. You can see there's just a little nubbin of it left. So that weakens that part enough where I can go pry it out like that. Okay. And then what I'll do is we'll put a new cutoff wheel on here. And we'll grind off the rest of the posts the best we can. See if I can get this out of here. I'm using a number 20 cutoff wheel. I would say this is the most 
The Dremel tool has got to be the most frequent mechanical tool that I use when working with chassis stuff. And we're going to have to brush all the metal bits away that we've created on the chassis, but not worried about all that just yet. Okay, so happy new cutoff wheel. And let's go at the bracket some more. Okay, let's pry this side up. And let's see if I can work the other side. Get this up enough to get the tool underneath it. And if you got tin snips or something that can fit in here, that's another way you can bust it out. But I'm going to get this side up next, and then it'll allow me to bend this up so I can get to the last side. And obviously the reason why I'm not using my hands is because this is going to be really hot from the cutoff wheel. It's still pretty toasty. Well, that was easy. And then we'll just grind off the rest here. Alright, so that takes care of that mess. And we're definitely going to have to blow this out, brush it out a little bit further before we turn everything on again. So normally I don't like to do it that way, but also with all the wiring that's in the way underneath the chassis, uh, I'd be worried about melting wiring harnesses and stuff using a soldering iron trying to get this hot enough to get the solder to melt. So. But I'm not going to reinstall a new can. I'm going to mount a terminal strip so that really doesn't doesn't bother me too much that uh, this is here. So yeah, there's our uh, our fancy old can that's gone. And so I'm debating. I think I might get rid of this here and just replace that with a terminal strip too. Because the wires aren't long enough to reach up and over, we're going to be splicing wire into it to make it work. But uh, let's see what we got as far as terminal strips first. So I've more or less got three different styles. Um, I've got the little bitty guy here. Not much to him. I mean, I could mount that over here like this and stick the single capacitor up there. Uh, there's also a fatter version, and we can use this as a mount and then keep it isolated there. Let's do a quick test here and see if that capacitor I have is going to fit on that smaller terminal strip. I don't think it is. And, of course, I drop it on the ground, so it's magically run away. Ugh. Okay, so we have this guy, and the spacing for that is ideal for that capacitor there, so I think that's what I'm going to end up using for that guy. And we have to tack another 22 in parallel with that, so that'll give us a little more room to do so. So I think we'll do that for the singular guy. Let's take this old plate out and see how it's going to mount. And so, if I mount him 
here on the corner. That should work. Make sure the old screw goes through so I can just mount it directly in the old location without having to drill a new hole. So that actually, that works okay. So I just got this mounted here. That'll mount there, and the other little capacitor, which is much smaller underneath it. And then as far as our main values, uh, since they're all chassis grounded, I can use one of these with a center lug at ground, and we can mount that. Yeah, we can mount that like right there and then attach our values to it. Uh, yeah, so that in theory should work. And I do have another hole here if I want to mount another strip. I've got one here that's not tapped yet. Uh, my finger's down here. You can't see it because the wire harness is in the way, but uh, like that small value. 10 microfarad job could go right there. It's all going to be about fitment. Yeah, let's see. Let's just do a test fit here. Majority of this is all about planning, and then you got to wire everything up. Like, should I angle it like the other one, or should I not angle it? Does it matter? So yeah, there's that. That can fit there. And then if I need to, there's space for this extra one here. So that's pretty much how that's going to work. So I guess the next thing is to actually put these together. Now what did I do? That's oh, silly me, it's still mounted to the chassis. Gotta wake up. Okay, so we've we've got stuff to play with here. Which is good. So the singular dude, let me clean some of the solder off of this. We'll see how it's all going to fit together. These are just pulls from boards that I had. Let's see, how am I going to work this guy? Let me grab something to hold it up. Just so I can solder on it. I'm going to bash everything so that everyone gets motion sickness. Tin this up. Get it ready. Yes, I know there's already solder on there, but I want it to be fresh. This is going to be real fun trying to do this one. Is I want to get it through the hole so that it at least has some form of a mechanical connection here. I may just reinforce it from the other side, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, this isn't going to work. So 
So I may just try bending the tab after I solder to it, which will of course fatigue the crap out of it and cause it to fail, maybe. Alright, so we'll let that cool for a little bit. And we'll attach the other one. Assuming it's going to let me do that, which so far it doesn't look like it wants to cooperate. Get in there. Let that cool. And then we'll see if we can bend this at some ridiculous angle. Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, let's just double check the fitment over here. Oh, that's going to be fine. Okay, and so then we need to parallel a 22 microfarad, and we've got room to do that through those holes there. So, that'll live underneath there like that. Does it still fit in the location? Oh, yes. Yep, it clears the part. Very good. I love this ghetto fabulous stuff. I'll wrap the terminals around here. I'm trying to get it in at an angle so you can see what I'm soldering on. Let's grab this with the hemostat skin to hold it still. Such a useful tool. I think this would be so much more difficult without hemostats. And then we'll go clippy clippy. We'll bend this up. Double check the fitment again. Yeah, that just clears where I need it to be. So let me get the screw mounted. chassis screw isolates the ground which is what I want that's just gonna kind of stand up and do its thing there I can worry about wiring that up later probably what I'll do is I'll put a dab of uh, epoxy down here to hold it in place just so it's not so flopping around so much because I don't really like that I mean, granted, I'm not going to take this thing on a plane ride or anything, but it's still a good idea not to screw it up. Okay, so let's see what I have as far as clearances for the next bit of stuff here. Let's clean the solder off this guy. If they're relatively new parts, I will reuse them if I yank them out of a board. But if they're really old, like 20 years old or something, probably not. Okay, let's see how this is all going to mount up here. Definitely going to be some parts in the way. And I still have to figure out how to do the grounds, because everything has to tie to this point, but the overall amount of space doesn't really work in my favor. 
So while I'm waiting for that, let's um, let's see about getting this 10 microfarad thing mounted, 10 at 350. We'll solder that bad boy up. Looks like he's going to hold in place by himself. Alright. Snippy, snippy. So this one will mount over here. And that actually works better that way. Yeah, slightly in the way of that. Bend and twist that a little bit. Let me get a self-tapping screw and see if we can get that in there. Okay. Don't really want a flathead, but I think this is what I have in this gauge that'll work. Okay, that was easy. Now the question is, will it fit the uh, bracket? And it doesn't look like at first glance it will. No, well, I am wrong again. Looked like it was too fat. But we can't say fat because that's uh that's fat shaming. These obese parts. And as we know, parts are people too. Okay, just making sure we have proper clearances between us and that nearby regulator. I'm thinking that's a little bit close for comfort. I don't want that voltage potential there to become a problem. So we'll mount it over here. Okay, next up. We got this here. That's screwing down something. I'm trying to figure out where else I could mount this thing that it won't be too cumbersome. Yeah, I could mount it here. I mean, it really doesn't matter too much to me as long as it uh, achieves some form of getting the stuff in here. Come on. I'm trying to get this in here without breaking it. So far, I've been unsuccessful. Let's uh, bend some taps a little bit. See, this is the boring, monotonous side of this. It's because you have to plan your attack and put it all together and actually make it work in the real space. Now, I know what you're saying. Uh, you should have got a hayseed ham fest, or you should have got a adapt a cap and made it work that way. Or just shove them under the chassis somewhere. Sure, I could have done that. But uh, that was not my intent. I didn't want to do it that way. Anybody can do it that way. But I wanted to do it this way. Yep, that'll fit like that. With room to spare there. And I'll have room to stick at another 22 in parallel here. And I gotta remember to join that. Otherwise that'll be a problem. 
All right, so putting that together. I think I'll just make it easy on myself and join the uh, ground to the chassis now. And we'll just solder this bad boy up, assuming it'll cooperate long enough to do that. Come on. Take the solder. There you go. Nope, didn't want to do that. And we'll solder the ground. And then go snippy snippy. And you notice how after every change that I make, I go back and I check for fitment. Because obviously if it doesn't fit, it ain't going to matter. So that fits there. So that's the 200. And then the next one we have is the 160, which I have the 180 for. Which is going to be right up against that. You can see that there. Now we might have a problem because of how this is laid out here, but yeah, it looks like it will fit. That's good. And then I'll have to mount the 100 somewhere else because I know it's not going to fit on that terminal strip. Let's get the uh, get off of there. Old solder off. I really don't want to waste wick on moving this stuff, so I'm not gonna. And I think after this one, I'm gonna take a break for a little bit. We'll come back to this later. Because I still have to open the store at some point. Okay. Come on. Solder this guy in here. Yep. That's not the orientation I want. I want the ground to be close to here. Yeah, if I was doing some full-on restoration and I wanted this thing to be perfect, I'd do haze heat or adapt to caps or something like that, but otherwise it's not terribly important for me. Let me just put a little jumper in here. And that works. So trying to do this with just needle nose sucks. I like having the uh, hemostats better. That solder joint on the right there doesn't look all that good. So I'm going to fix that one. There we go. Much better. Yeah, we'll just clip the excess off here. And we'll check it for fitment again. And that works fine. So let's go ahead and secure, secure it with the screw. And then that will give me a better idea as to where to put the remaining capacitor, which is the 10 microfarad. I might just stick that underneath the chassis. Who knows? Tighten that down. So, alright, so that kind of works out so far. 
Yeah, that works out. I could get another small terminal strip and just stick the tent over here or something. No biggie. And then we'll just run a bunch of wires and heat shrink them to the existing power supply lines and that should be good to go. I'm going to take a break from this one today and we'll come back to it. Okay, so we're going to jump back into this. And I have one more high voltage capacitor that I have to mount. And I think the way that I'm going to end up doing it is mounting it down here in this hole there on the terminal strip. So that way it will be fairly easy to wire everything up. That way it's not uh, cumbersome. Everything else is mounted here. It's looking good. We'll just be running wires to and from and then splicing it into the harness with some sh heat shrink. So let me get a terminal strip of appropriate size. And let's see, I could probably, eh, I don't know if I want to do it that way. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe I should use a larger one with the ground lug that I can actually utilize. So I think I'll do this. And we'll just make sure that that fits over here first. Looks like it does. So you can kind of get a gauge a better feel as to what I'm doing again here. If I can get the camera cooperate, that'd be cool. Okay, so I want to stand this up so that the negative is this way. up and around for a slightly better mechanical connection. Put this here so you guys can see it better. And then we'll solder this guy up. If I can get it hold still long enough to do that. Mail guy is here. He really needs to get that truck fixed. And there's one. And then there's two. Come on. Hold still. All right. Let's go ahead and trim off the excess. Okay, so there's our 10 at 450. Or no, this is 100 at 450. This is going to serve for the 80 microfarad one. Uh, let's go ahead and get a self-tapping machine screw and mount that guy up. There we go. And in the end, all these ones that use a lug to attach to ground, I'm going to be soldering them to the chassis, the ground side of it. See that made for a crappy connection. Too loose. 
yeah, bye bye threads. Uh, so let's see. On this one, let me try a bit harder of a screw. I'm gonna use one of these hex nut things. Let's see if I can reorient this so you guys can see a little better. Okay. First, I gotta see if this will even thread in here. This is a harder steel than the cheap one that I was using. There we go, got it to thread. Yeah, let's see if we can get it down in here. Not too much difficulty. And if this doesn't work well enough, it's not firm enough, then I'll probably end up doing a screw and nut from the other side. That's pretty firm. It's about what I want. Okay. That can work. All right, so that is, there's our little high voltage electrolytic farm there. And so now what we need to do is run the appropriate wiring through and attach it to the appropriate capacitors. And that's where the, uh, the time vampire sets in. I know this looks super ghetto fabulous here, but it's going to work. And I'm not going to have to wait for a completely new set of caps. I'm just going to use what I have. This is not a a perfect restoration. If it was, I'd be spending the money for some hayseed cans or adapted cap type stuff. But uh, in this case, it just needs to work and work correctly. And then there's this guy here, this guy on the board, which was our uh, 50 at 150. So we'll change that out. Got to do that from the bottom side. But let's uh, let's see about getting this stuff wired up first. Okay, so the one on the board up there, that 50 at 150, is that guy up in there. He needs to be desoldered and removed. Uh, so I think the first thing I'm going to work on is that big 350 microfarad. And uh, the way that it worked was is I had the red lead <clears throat> attached to the negative, and this big resistor was attached to the positive and they've got that side heat shrunk so let me first pass this through the hole and see if I have enough leeway Ooh. <clears throat> to attach this to the big thing up top and if not I can figure something else out and then the red thing, I'll just unsolder this wire here and attach a new one and run it up through the bottom. And I think the only color and high voltage wiring that I have that would handle is probably yellow or black. I'll we'll have to see. But uh, yeah, let's flip this up real quick and see if that resistor will reach or if I'll have to splice some wire into that too. So it looks like I should be able to make that work. There should be enough slack in here that I can just attach this. We'll put some heat shrink on that lead there so that there isn't high voltage just bouncing around in that hole and then uh, we'll solder it up. So it's pretty hard to see up in there. But this is where the resistor is going to attach to, right there. I've got the lead heat shrunk. So we're just going to get that good and hot with a soldering iron and solder that lead in there. And then we'll work on getting the uh, secondary lead attached to the appropriate spot. Need it to take. There we go. And 
once that's solidified, we'll give that a good tug and see if it's taken. It has not taken. Got to make sure that connection's good. Try that again, let it cool. It's a good idea not to blow on it because that changes the way that the solder hardens. There we go, I got a nice firm connection there. Okay. So let's, uh, this is the wire that needs to be replaced. I'm gonna go ahead and get another piece of lead unless this will actually reach up in here, it might. Might, might, might. Let's uh, let's see if it will. Nah, that's too. T that's pulling it too tight. I could make it work, but it's pulling it too tight. I don't like that. Focus. Yeah, I was pulling that way too tight, and I didn't want to do that. So let's cut another piece. Okay. Got some yellow here, I'm going to solder up. And then it's probably going to be tricky to see me doing this. But it's got to go in that spot there. It would be easier, let's see if I can get this thing I probably can't because of the way that the chassis is shaped. Just bear with me a second. I'm going to move some stuff around. Make sure I don't cremate anything. Let's see if that gives you guys a better view. Eh, not really. <laughs> not really. It's just tight. It's just tight in there. Yeah, so that's back in there is our target. Let's see what I can do to make this work well enough. I think to simplify things since I've got the wire tinned, we're just going to heat the work area. Wait for the solder to take. Give it a push through the hole. charring there but not much okay Do a quick zoom out here and then we need to attach the uh, bear with me here while I readjust the mount so this wire here needs to go I see some crummy soldering down in there that I should probably take care of at the same time. But first, let's just focus on getting this out of the way. Uh, that was easy. And I think while I'm down here, I'm going to get some soldering work done on allow me to get in here. There's this point here that I'm concerned about. Soldering's really crummy. There was another one in there too I didn't like. I think I dropped a piece of solder in there. Yep, there it is. Okay. Yeah, we'll push some fresh solder on this point here. Let's get this out of the way so I don't burn it anymore. And then we'll uh, cut enough of this away that we have service slack. OK. 
Okay. If at any time you feel that this is just monotonous work, feel free to speed it up. You can all watch on double speed. Trying to make a little loop or a hook or something. Okay, so we're good there. Nice secure connections. All right, so let's see, what else do I have to do? That was just, uh, that's for the doubler. And so now I have to focus on these other colors down here, which we made the diagram for. Most of them are just for power supply filtering and the like. So let's see how we're gonna route all these. Okay, so according to our happy little diagram, the green's the 10 microfarad, the orange is the 80, which we've now bumped up to uh, 100. The two reds are the 160, which we bumped up to a 180, and then the, uh, the blues go to the 220s at 350. So, because of the simplicity of it, I think I'll start with the, uh, the green lead first, because it's pretty simple to get to, and there's a lot of slack in this, so I think I'm going to reroute this wire. And I think we'll just go through here instead of around that choke. And the green goes up to the 10 microfarad, which I believe is right about there. Let's uh, pull this out, have a look, see. Yeah, I think the terminal strip is right there for the 10. I can see it's little tininess poking up there. So we want to solder this point here with the green lead. And let me reroute it again so it's not hanging around all the AC stuff. I don't think it's going to matter too much, but we'll just route it past the chokes. Again, this is why hemostats are such a wonderful thing is because you can Get in where your hands cannot. And just so that we have a little more service slack, I think I'm not going to trim any off this green lead. I'm just going to strip off the end and tin it. And the ground of the terminal strip is already at chassis ground. I'm going to solder all those tabs to the chassis to make the connection a little better once we're done here. So you're just going to get put right about there. Then we'll solder it up. And I'll remember to route all these wires away from the giant resistor once we've got everything in place. I'm trying to heat the lug by itself and then flow the solder into the lug rather than just blasting the wire with solder and hope that it sticks. It's better to heat the work area than the, just the specific thing that you're trying to solder. So that's a good firm connection there. We'll get this out of the way. And we'll get the yellow thing out of the way. Okay, so the next is the blue lead to this choke or the orange lead. Now the orange lead is going to be fairly simple and it's already got more length on it so let's do that one next. That one goes to the 
100 microfarad capacitor that we've got upstairs here and there's an opening in the chassis that I think I can feed this through I'm just gonna bash the camera so everyone gets motion sickness I know that's what everyone loves okay let's see what this looks like topside so it looks like top side is going to be just a hair short. So what I'm going to do is actually flip the orientation of this, which will make up for the difference. I think while I'm at it, I'll scrapey scrapey the uh, chassis point here. Just to give it a little bit better connection. You solder it in, bend this over, the question is, is, will this really help anything? And the answer to that question is, mm, let's try a different spot. I'm just going to lift this up really quick and feed this into a closer space. Let's see if that gets us there. Yeah, that's that'll work. Okay, let's tighten that down. Let's strip our wire, and we're going to hold it as we strip it so I don't chafe it on anything. And then we'll feed it. Once we got it fed in here, let's go ahead and solder it up. Let it cool. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so we got two of the four sections of that big tall can done. I'll probably end up soldering a lead here to the ground lug for reinforcement. Okay, so we got two left. Um, let's see. We got the 200 and the 180. So let's see how we can get those tied together because I will need to splice those. Okay, so the two red leads are probably my biggest concern. Okay, so we have to bring them together. And more or less, what I'm going to do is tie them together, tie them to another lead which will then go to the capacitors. All right. So we'll tie that together, solder it. Then we'll get our lead here, and I pinch it here, 
and wrap it around this. So again, our mechanical connection, and we'll solder that. Then we'll slip some heat shrink over this. All right, good tug on that. No problems there. And I'm gonna squeeze down these little sharp points that might tear the shrink tubing. All right. And then we'll cut our extra off to run upstairs. And then let me get the appropriate size heat shrink. So let's see if this works. We're just gonna slide it on like that. And then let me get the heat gun. Okay, and then we'll just shrink it down. Okie dokie. And then we'll... Let's see, let's run it through the top. see where we're going to have to attach it and then I can determine how much I need to get cut off of there okay so our target is this guy here this 180 so I think that we have actually just the right amount so let's just go ahead and strip it that's twisted good and tight. Don't want any pieces fraying out when I try to put it through the terminal strip. Okay. So that's in there. Let's change viewpoints here. So there is our point right there. So we have to solder that up. Let's see if I can get in here without destroying things. And yeah, I'm probably going to be bumping the camera because it's literally like right in front of me. for that to harden and then we'll give a little tug on it to make sure it's secure yeah we're good and then maybe I'll cut off that sharp point there because sharp points will give a, a tendency for arcing And let me just look around there. Looks like the solder's good. Let me just wiggle it on it some more, make sure. Yep, that's pretty firm. Okay, so that's that lead. Now all that's left is the blue one for the high voltage stuff. So let's uh, make our splice there. So this one goes to the uh, 200 microfarad up top. This is on the high side of the choke, whereas the 180 we just did was on the low side of the choke. Let's go ahead and tin this up. I know people's OCD are probably going through the roof right now with using the same color wire for all the applications, but it's just a matter of tracing out where it goes. 
doesn't bother me all that much. And we'll solder this up. And it's thing gonna bend and change because it's getting hot, metal's changing, it's expanding. And that's going to lose its grip. And yeah, so we're going to redo that one. I may just try a different approach method to that. Do it the old fashioned way. Twist it up at one end. put the heat shrink over that so stick another four inches on there just because I get my piece of heat shrink okay so here's our piece of heat shrink which is just gonna slide over that and let's get the heat gun out Let's go ahead and feed this through to the top side. Now let's go top side and attach it. So for this capacitor, it's going to attach right there. And so I am, I might have been able to stretch that to reach, but no sense in stressing that wire if I don't have to. So we're going to cut the excess off here. We're going to strip it. Twist it up. And I'm going to feed it into the appropriate terminal position down here. And see, that's why we twist it, is because it's beginning to fray, and I don't want that little fray to allow voltage to get to anything else. And it's always the last wire that is least cooperative. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there, and then very carefully solder it, hopefully without obliterating the insulation on this wiring harness. solder got left behind and yeah, we'll give a tug on that lead that leads nice and strong okay and we'll do some scrapey scrapey here Although these are all tied in here, I'd still rather have some form of physical connection to the chassis if at all possible. Grabbing a little lead here to solder to that point. It's 
give a tug on that. Yep, that ain't going nowhere. And we'll just attach that to that ground there. In a hybrid set like this, ground integrity is crucial, so I'm going to go ahead and do this ground reinforcement for this guy. And the other 10 microfarad and then the uh, ones here getting uh, low on space on the camera so I think I'm gonna have to wrap it up for now so this takes care of the high voltage side except for this capacitor here which will change out in the next video and then also in addition to this we still have to do the low voltage one but that's going to be pretty easy. That's just a two section, 2000 microfarad, 50 volt, what they do. And then we'll start getting into uh, replacing all the silly little electrolytics, uh, the cracked resistor that somebody noted, checking all the rest of the resistors for out of tolerance stuff, soldering the tube sockets, just uh, being fairly thorough. And, uh, but that's going to be for another video. So I hope you enjoyed this segment. Uh, stay tuned for the next part, and uh, thanks for watching.